Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and I am a third year first grade teacher and I am so glad that you're here. Today I'm going to be sharing my top five classroom must-haves that I use almost every single day and that I could not live without in my classroom. When I first started teaching, my classroom felt like completely empty, but now after a couple of years of experience, I've really figured out the things that I like having in my classroom and then the things that I don't use as much as I thought I would. So today I'm gonna share the top five things that I personally like and that you might wanna try out for your classroom. The first must have for my classroom is my wireless doorbell. I bought this when I first started teaching. So my first year teaching, I had it in my classroom and I really only used it for the cutesy songs to clean up during our center rotations. But this year, my third year teaching, because of the COVID situation and having to wear masks, I switched to using it as my attention grabber throughout the entire day. And let me tell you, I will never go back. This little tool is such a voice saver. I keep it on my lanyard all day in a hand sanitizer container, and then I have the receiver plugged in under the counter over here at the entrance to my room where it can be heard in every space in the room. So if we're doing a turn and talk at the calendar board or at the smart board, all I have to do is click on the doorbell and they know to turn around and lock eyes with me and get quiet real quick. It is such a time saver. I love it so much. Let me show you what it looks like where it's plugged in. All right, so the button is on my lanyard and then the receiver I plug in down here. And if I ever needed to change the tone, I would just have to come down here and fix it, but I keep it as the same classic tone. Just all year round, because it's short and sweet and to the point. The wireless doorbell that I have is from Amazon and it's the same one that you see teachers that have all over Instagram. It's great and I've never had any trouble with it. My second must have are these awesome buckets that are from Michaels. I have them in multiple different colors. I've got some dark blue, some teal, and some pink because every year around summertime they come out with different colors and when I walk in I'm like, yep, I need some more of those. So I mostly use the buckets to hold math games because our math curriculum has a lot of different games that their students will play throughout the unit. So I'll take each bucket and place the materials for a specific game inside. That way when it's cleanup time, I just put the bucket on the back table and the students come put their materials in the bucket. And it's really easy to pass out and just kind of have a running little display of all of the games for our unit. It also makes it easier for me to visually see what the students are working on and to say, hey, can you go grab that bucket? Let's practice this game together if I needed to for intervention. You can also use dry erase marker on the front of it. Now, if the students touch it and rub it, it will come off a little bit. But if you just needed to quickly label it for a day for an activity, that would be an easy way to label the buckets. So let me show you some examples of what's inside my buckets now. All right, so here's what my Michaels buckets look like right now. In this one, I have um, some pennies and tin frame cards. We were working on, they had to draw a number and then build it on the tin frames. In my second one, I have all of our clocks because in this unit, we've been doing a lot of work with clocks in a whole group. And so when I need to give those out in a whole group, I just grab the bucket and go. My next one, it's kind of a hodgepodge of a couple different things right now. I really need to clean it out. But you can see that we had a game going with some dot cards and cubes. And then my last one has my game that I use with my EL students, so number recognition game. I keep this one out all the time for my EL students who are just learning English and they got their board and then their cards are in here as well. So anytime I need to do that during intervention, I just send them to come grab the game and they're good to go. Clearly I have a lot of them. I've got a couple stacked right here. Um, and then I even have some in my back counter too. So you can never have too many of these buckets. I find uses for them all the time. And again, they are from Michaels and they're usually on sale every once in a while. And they definitely have a lot of them in store during the summertime. My third must have item are the clear scrapbook cases that are also from Michaels. I use these to hold all of the materials that we use in our math curriculum for the games. So when they're not in the buckets that I just showed you earlier, they're all stored in a scrapbook case that's labeled by unit. 
Then on the top of the case, I have a little table of contents that tells me what's inside that bucket that I would need for this specific unit. This was a huge project I did after my first year of teaching when I was more comfortable with the math curriculum. Because when I first got in my classroom, all of the cards and the games and the activities that are inside this box were just in one giant bucket, like a big clear box. And they weren't organized by unit, so I would have to go through the entire bucket every time we learned a new game. And I just knew that I needed something to use to organize it to make it easier for me to access. Let me give you a little mini tour of the scrapbook case on the inside. Okay, again, this is where I store all my scrapbook cases. They fit perfectly on my shelf. And then this one over here is just the unit one example. So I got these labels and I made those using some graphics and some fun fonts. Um, and then I've made a table of contents for each one that tells the games that are inside and the cards. And then inside each case, I just have them sorted with Ziploc baggies that are labeled because these are the Ziploc bags that I then transfer into the Michaels buckets when we're playing the game. So here's some of the cards and then the game boards I'll keep either in plastic sheet protectors or in some gallon size bags as well. But this keeps it way more organized and then I know, okay, we're in unit one. Here are all the supplies we need for our unit one game. I also keep my current unit over here on the other side of my classroom. So that's where I store them all the time. And then when we're in a specific unit, like right now, we're in unit seven, I move it over here onto this shelf. That way it's closer to my buckets and it's out and easy for me to access without having to go in the big cabinet every time. Classroom must have number four are sit spots. My first year teaching, I spent a good bit of money on this big rug of the United States that I put all over in this area for my kids to sit on and then just didn't like it and realized that they just rolled around on the rug and I didn't have a designated spot to sit on. So my second year, I ordered these from Amazon and I will never go back to using a rug again. These just really help kids have a defined space when they're sitting on the carpet for a whole group and it's really easy to redirect and say, hey, get on your spot, or hey, make sure that you're on your spot and not in somebody else's. And I just love that so much. It has made my life so much easier. So I would definitely recommend that you get some sit spots. There are lots of different varieties on Amazon, but I'll link the ones that I have in the description box below. Teacher must have number five is the teacher toolbox. Now I know before I started teaching, I saw these all over Instagram and I was like, oh, I just have to have one because everyone on Instagram has one. So if that's what you're thinking, let me confirm what you're thinking and say, yes, you do need one because this gives me a space to put all of those little odds and ends that would be all over my classroom otherwise. There's just a place to store tape and index cards and sticky notes, and it's just a great go-to place to find anything that I might need. I am an organized type person, so it would drive me crazy if all of the things inside my toolbox were in my desk or in different boxes and all over the place. That would just be way too much for me. So I love having the toolbox because it keeps it all in one spot. I know Amazon has these toolboxes, so I will link a similar one in the description below. And the labels that I used are from Teach, Create, Motivate on Teachers Pay Teachers, but there are so many different kinds, so you can get on and find one that matches your theme. I just like this one because it was bright colors and it would just always be cute and match. So I keep it right here on my desk, which is a little messy with all my um, notes up here, but it's just in a very good place where I can keep everything organized. You can kind of see what's inside. It fits Sharpie markers and staples, which I might need to refill soon. Um, push pins, sticky notes, also need to refill. Um, I love this drawer. Got my washi tapes in one spot. There's even a miscellaneous drawer. So everything has a place and oh my goodness, it's so dusty on top. That's gross. So I definitely need to dust it off. But I love my teacher toolbox and 10 out of 10 would totally recommend that you get one for your classroom. Those are my top five must-haves in my classroom that I have just loved since purchasing and use often. Hopefully this gave you a couple of ideas for your classroom, and if you're a teacher and you have one of these must-haves in your classroom, let me know which must-have we share. Also, if there's anything that you really like that's not on my list, please comment it below because I'm always looking to try new things in my room. 
Thanks so much for tuning in. I post a new video every week, so I hope you'll click like and subscribe below and join me for my next one. See y'all later.